Oh, that's good coffee this morning, folks. Good coffee. So I'm trying the uh, the Folgers 1850, which is the their select brand, and this is in their extra dark morning bold. Pretty stoked about that. Men, women, boys, girls, children of all ages, welcome. Good morning. It's time for your workshop update. Today is Tuesday, October 9th. Yesterday was Columbus Day. And if you guys had to work, my apologies. I hope it was a productive day at work. And if you didn't have to work, I hope that you guys were outside somewhere. I actually went fishing for the first time in quite some time, probably a few weeks. Um, I'd been under the weather the last couple of days and I've been trying to get a bunch of orders out. So just hadn't been in the forecast for me to do any fishing. But yesterday was a gorgeous day, still on the warm side. I mean, it's the middle of October and it's still almost 90 degrees. So Mama Nature, I don't know what is going on with you, but uh, it's time for fall to get here. We would really like some fall. Hey, I've got a few pieces to get through this morning, so let's get right to it. First up, let's feature this lovely little money crawl. All of these are available on my website on www.jekyllbaits.com. This is just a fun little crawl pattern. The, uh, the owner of this order definitely understands the need for color and a little bit louder pop in that thermocline. Thermocline's almost done, um, but louder, poppier baits. This is the Deep Pumpkin Seed. Done with that Doris metal mesh fabric. We've folded some color on top of a Caribbean and, and light blue and then yellow on the bottom and just, I mean, that's just a cool looking bait. Lots of fun with that one. This is the reimagined Showstopper. And we have folded in, if you guys can see, let's see if we can get that off of there, there we go. We folded in pieces of the layering so you get that under skeletal mimic for the crawfish showstopper and these are all i've been showing you on uh, the s cranks are all dinger so if you're a paint slinger and you want a good replica of the s crank he's the best in the business go get some now this is on a holographic foiled dinger s and this is the winter gill. This one, I'll, uh, I'll shoot up a picture of the original bait. And I'm not particularly, I mean, this is, a, this is really cool on top, but it's not the color we were going for. It's a little bit greener. And you can see that green transition going up to that. And this is supposed to be a true green over top of that orange veining on the top and not that yellowish green. Uh, but this is just the first pass at it and I will flash the picture of what it is imitating. Fish that I caught on Norfolk a few weeks ago. Also, in a 2.5, this is my take on the Tennessee Shad got that dark marbling up top into a very bright pearl white off that green black eyes and that flush orange rusty red orange chest just a little bit on the tail but pretty happy with how that turned out we're calling this the Livingston Sunkissed Seed. Actually, you know, when the dots go on those, I know it's, you know, it's not a traditional, it's not staying with the scientific or anatomy of how that bait is portrayed because usually the, the red eards and the long eards are the one with the red. And this is just on a sunkissed seed, but he wanted the blue on the bottom fading up into that yellow-red, almost a, a purple. Good looking bait. This is on a sixth sense medium diver. So, long time ago, this was a sixth sense. Brand new, out of box. Cool bait though, real happy with how this came out. Folks, this is how you know when it's time to change that KBS. And again, people, um, 
I, I can't say that anything went wrong with the KBS except for me. Uh, I didn't put the lid on tight enough. It was obvious when I opened the jar and I should have known better than to try and dunk something in before I tested it, but I did. And this was the result. So unfortunately I had to redo this one, which we did, but this would have been a cool bait. However, since it's not sellable now, I get to quote unquote test it, which I'm pretty happy to do. But you can see the bubbling in that that ran down the sides. And that is most unfortunate because this would have been a really killer bait. Um, and it still will be. I mean, this is the fish don't care if there's bubbles down the side of it that have hardened, but the customers don't want to see that. So, but this is simply all because my lid was not tightened the night before. And that happens sometimes, but you really don't want to waste it on stuff that's $56 a quart. So be mindful of how you store your KBS or any epoxy that you're using. Oh well. But that's it folks. That is your workshop update for this morning. I hope you guys have a great day and a great rest of your week. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. You can find most of these patterns. You, let's, let's kind of separate this out. You can find all this stuff at www.jekyllbaits.com. Happy casting, and thanks for hanging out. Enjoy your day.